Hi everyone, it's Jim Healthy, creator of the best-selling book, The 30-Day Diabetes Cure, and the global campaign to create 1 million ex-diabetics this year. And I'm here today with Dr. Roy Hilbron, one of the country's leading holistic MDs, cardiologist, and one of the co-creators of the world-famous South Beach Diet. And today we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes, probably the most serious health problem on the planet today. Type 2 diabetes seems to be doubling every 10 to 15 years, and by the end of this decade will probably affect 30% of the world's population. Dr. Hilbrine, why is type 2 diabetes such a serious problem today? Um, the risk of type 2 diabetes is the severe diseases that come with it, heart attacks, strokes, amputations, kidney disease, brain failure. All of these are life-threatening situations that evolve as your diabetes evolves. And heart disease uh, is one of the, is the number one complication of type 2 diabetes, isn't it? Correct. Uh, most diabetics uh, will, over 75% will have a heart attack during the time that they have their diabetes. What is the connection between type 2 diabetes and heart disease? Yeah, the complication of diabetes is high levels of blood sugar, high levels of insulin. This causes damage to the artery walls, sort of like shards of glass scratching at the vessels. And when those vessels become damaged, the body creates plaque as a way to try and heal the damage to those artery walls. Don't current uh, diabetic medications prevent this? Um, actually, no. Current diabetic medications are geared to control the blood sugar, but it's actually the insulin that's causing the damage to the artery walls. And several studies have shown that even though you control the sugar, there are still the complications remain. So somebody could be following their doctor's instructions pretty much to the letter and still suffer a heart attack or a stroke? Correct. Wow. So what is the problem with Current treat, the current medical treatment of type 2 diabetes. Now, the, the biggest sort of sadness of it is that the patient goes to the doctor, uh, they take their pills and expect everything to be okay, and that's really not what's going to occur. The path that they're set on with diabetes on the pills is, like I said, 75% will have a heart attack, will have a stroke, will have sudden death. And what we want to offer is that that's not necessarily the only course. There is a chance you can get off your medicines and cure your diabetes. So you said you can cure your diabetes. This is something that we haven't heard about. Correct. This is most people believe once you have it, you have it. Like most diseases, you have diabetes, you take your pills, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. But what we've discovered is that that's not the case. You can completely reverse it. So I'm very interested in, you say type 2 diabetes can be reversed and even cured. I'm very interested in why more people don't know about this. Yeah, the traditional model in medicine is that you go in, you see your doctor, he gives you a prescription or two, and you take these pills. That's the way the model is set up. He might mention something about diet or exercise briefly, but that's how the whole system is set up. The reality is patients that are interested in their own care can actually work with us and are able to fully get off their medications and completely normalize their blood sugar. And this is exactly what we want the entire world to know, the entire population of type 2 diabetics to know, is that they don't have to spend the rest of their lives on drugs, worrying about complications of, of type 2 diabetes, worrying about uh, their diet, cheating on their diet, you know, constantly monitoring their blood sugar, which test strips alone cost a dollar a piece. And I, I, my understanding is that doctors want people, di diabetics, to test their blood sugar five to six times a day. That's five dollars a day just in strips. Um, so what then, what would your advice be to the person that has type 2 diabetes that wants to reverse their diabetes and get off those medications? Yeah, the, the first thing I'd want to say is, look, there is the opportunity to completely get off your pills, get off your monitoring, and completely reverse any risk that you might have further down the road. And with the program we've developed, you're able to accomplish this. On the, and, and you can actually do it in 30 days if you're very diligent. Correct. Dr. Hilbron, what would be maybe the first couple of steps that somebody with type 2 diabetes could do immediately to bring their insulin levels down? 
So definitely um, sodas that have refined sugar, you want to try and avoid. Each glass of soda has between 8 and 10 teaspoons of sugar, and that's going to provoke a lot of insulin release and a lot of elevation of blood sugar. But what about diet sodas that don't have any sugar in them? Yeah, it's even actually worse. They have two main problems. One is they provoke the body to actually want to eat more, and the second is they're converted to formaldehyde within the brain. So not good. So people are thinking that they're drinking diet drinks and, and sweetening their foods with artificial sweeteners. They think they're not getting the calories, they're not getting the sugar. They're actually increasing their appetite and their desire to eat more sugar. Correct. So you're saying that artificial sweeteners actually make you fat. Correct. Amazing. And we eat a lot of sugar in this country and in Western cultures. We actually eat about 150 to 170 pounds of sugar a year. And that is an amazing load for the metabolism, isn't it? Yes. The body's not designed to run on sugar like that. What happens when, that, when so much sugar is constantly flowing through the bloodstream? Yeah, so it's a major, the, the body deals with what it's presented with. So it starts to release insulin. The liver starts to create fat cells where you can store the sugar. It just tries to put it all over the place. And it's really very toxic to our blood vessels, our brain, our pancreas suffers incredibly, having to produce sudden surges of insulin. Now, is this, I've read recently that, that there is a connection between the consumption of sugar, overconsumption of sugar, and Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Is that a medical fact? Yeah, so it's now called type 3 diabetes. It's a new classification where we're believing based on these high consumptions of sugar, the brain becomes damaged and actually creates the plaques of Alzheimer's. And so there's uh, some chance that this might be one of the reasons we're seeing such an epidemic of Alzheimer's and dementia now in the elderly population and, may, and starting in people 40 and 50 years old. Correct, because as if you've been on, you know, since you were age six, having these high sugar diets, by the time you're 40 or 50, it's starting to show up. Okay, so cut back on the sodas, cut back on the sugar, eliminate the sugar if you can. Are there any healthy sweeteners that, for people that have sweet tooth? Uh, stevia is a plant that's actually hundreds of times sweeter than sugar. Uh, it has no calories. Uh, it's natural. And it doesn't spike blood sugar, spike blood or, sugar. Ins or insulin. Right. So let's talk about now refined carbohydrates because my understanding is that refined carbohydrates, these are grains that have been polished in the, br in the bran and roughage has been removed. When they hit the bloodstream, they hit the bloodstream almost like table sugar. Is that right? Correct. They're, um, because of the way they're absorbed in the stomach and in the intestines, there's an immediate release of this, what the body sees as sugar, um, because it really has no container. Nature always wraps, if you think of like sugar cane, you know, it's a lot of roughage and a little bit of sugar, but when you squeeze all the sugar out of it, that's where it hits the bloodstream, and the body's actually not designed to handle that kind of load. So a lot of people seem to like sugar. We eat so much sugar in this country and in developed nations. What is the mechanism of a sweet tooth? Is sugar addictive? Yes, sugar is definitely addicted. The more sugar you eat, your taste buds get down-regulated and things that were sweet don't taste as sweet as before. So you need more and more sugar to achieve the same level of sweetness in your mouth is one part of it. The second part of it is when you have sugar, your blood sugar spikes up, your body releases insulin, and then it drops back down. When you hit that low point, you start looking for cookies and brownies and things like this because your sugar is so low, your brain starts pleading for it. And my understanding is that sugar also affects a, a, a center in the brain that uh, is the same center that responds to narcotics, alcohol, to uh, nicotine. Is that correct? Correct. So as sugar is released, the dopamine releasing center, which is your reward center in your brain, um, is satisfied. As the blood sugar levels drop, the brain's very sensitive to blood sugar. It only works in a very narrow range. So as that starts to drop, your, your brain starts to activate to look for sugar in the environment. So how does somebody 
detox and become unaddicted from sugar if they have a strong sugar habit. Right, so the, the key to that is to find foods that are somewhat sweet but don't have the high sugar content. So something like a banana, for example, um, has sugar, is sweet, but it's in a, in the way it's structured, it doesn't cause that spike in sugar. So is, are you saying fruit is okay for type 2 diabetics in, in moderation? Correct. In the transition of that sweet tooth sort of situation, uh, fruits can help cross that. Now I'm curious about alcohol because a lot of alcohols have high sugar content. What, is, what about alcohol for the type 2 diabetic? Yeah, so um, alcohol has two sides to it. Um, alcohol has a unique ability to reach the brain. So it's able to cross the blood-brain barrier quickly. The brain running mostly on sugar in a very narrow range, when the sugar is low, wine is able to supply sugar directly to the brain suddenly in a very sort of satisfying way. The bad side of it is that it is directly toxic to brain cells. So every time you do drink any alcohol, you are losing some brain cells. And I haven't met anybody yet who has too many brain cells. <laughs> Good point, good point. Well, we've spent a lot of time talking about all the no-no foods and what's bad for people with type 2 diabetes. Let's talk about what should someone with type 2 diabetes be eating to reverse their diabetes? So um, the foundation is, you know, basically vegetables are the key. So protein, vegetables are really the base of the diet. So basically, uh, fish, meat, cheese, but aren't these high-fat foods, don't they cause heart disease? So the whole idea that um, high-fat foods affect cholesterol um, is not 100% correct. Our brain is made mostly of fat. Every cell wall in our system is made from fat, so we actually do need a certain amount of fat. So fat is actually good for the person with diabetes and people without diabetes. Correct. So carbohydrates bad, refined carbohydrates bad, protein, fat, good, and Correct. vegetables. Correct. Great. Well, it's a lot of information for somebody to assimilate into their daily diet. So what we've done with the 30-day diabetes cure is we've broken these tiny steps down into daily things that you do. So like the first day, maybe you cut back on a soda and if you're you can do it, eliminate all sodas, and the next day we add a positive thing, which is cinnamon. So we're telling people that they should be eating about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Why is that? Cinnamon, um, for years, has been known to have beneficial effects for the diabetic. Basically, it's able to help the cells use the sugar. So what's the, what's the relationship between eating cinnamon and insulin in the body? because we want to keep insulin low. Correct. So cinnamon is able to have the cells open up to blood sugar so you don't need as much insulin in the system. Uh, so those are just two, three things that you, you can do. There in the 30-day di diabetes cure plan, you'll see 30 things, small steps like this that you can do. And, and so that's what, that's what we've done with the 30-day diabetes cure plan. Every day, you just make one small adjustment. It's really very manageable. You, you stop doing something, one small thing that provokes your blood sugar and your insulin. You do one healthy thing that helps to heal your body and bring your metabolism back into shape. By the end of 30 days, you may not be free of your type 2 diabetes because everybody's different, but you will be leading a diabetes-reversing lifestyle. And this is a lifestyle, just as we say, for life. This is a diet for life. And so I, I, I realized that the whole idea that type 2 diabetes can be reversed is a foreign concept to a lot of people. They have not heard it from their doctors or, or from the media. But if you're a little bit skeptical and you want to get some more information about it, we've written a book called Diabetes Heroes. Diabetes Heroes profiles number of patients who have successfully reversed their type 2 diabetes just through diet and lifestyle improvements, just what we've been talking about today. The book is absolutely free. I urge you to send for it. You can download an ebook copy and we'll show you how to do that later. Or you can get the printed edition if just pay postage and handling. Uh, it's a fascinating book, 
a profile in Courage. I urge you to get it and read it and send it to your friends with diabetes. So my understanding is that current drugs for type 2 diabetes are all aimed at lowering blood sugar. Now, isn't that a good thing? Um, in theory, the problem is the approach they go to get there. When blood sugar is high, if you release more insulin, the insulin will actually drive the sugar into fat cells. So the, so the insulin is taking the sugar in the bloodstream and turning it into fat and putting it on our bellies and at places where we don't <laughs> want it. Correct. Wow, what a trick, huh? If drugs aren't the answer, the only solution available to a person with type 2 diabetes is to stop consuming the foods and beverages that raise the blood sugar, that provoke the insulin, that make the fat. It seems so simple. How come people aren't being told this? Yeah, and the pharmaceutical industry is designed to come up with medications that you take. It's not really designed to get at the underlying root of the problem, because once the underlying root of the problem is solved, the problem is solved and you don't come back. And there's no more drugs to sell and no more doctor's visits. And so, I mean, it sounds like it's kind of a business thing. Yeah. It's sort right. of a loop. All right. <laughs> I know this sounds like we're asking people to give up the things that they love. Give up sodas, give up sugar, give up pastries, give up bread. I mean, sounds like such deprivation, but what do you say to that? Yeah, the, the idea is that you will feel better. As you do this, day by day, you will feel better and better and better. You'll stop having these mornings where you can't even get up in the morning, where you have to have a cup of coffee before you can even brush your teeth. You'll just have energy to spontaneously jump out of bed. You'll want to exercise. People will start telling you how great you look, how much energy you have, and it'll snowball in that way. You won't even think about these other things anymore because you'll feel so good. You know, I can attest to that. I'm 64 years old. I don't eat sugar. I don't drink sodas. I don't eat bread. Um, and I feel, I feel terrific. One of the things that I don't think pe people are aware of is that when you have high levels of blood sugar and insulin, it accelerates the aging process. Is that right? Correct. So a lot of the effects of aging, wrinkling and gaining weight in strange places, you know, for men, usually the belly, the women, the hips. This is all an effect of these cycles of high sugar, low sugar. The body's trying to store that fat. And we, we talked a little bit about how too much insulin and too much blood sugar dulls the brain function, but guys should know especially that too much blood sugar and insulin and body fat dulls the sexual response as well. Correct, so libido, the desire, is definitely diminished because you're so tired from these cycles of blood sugar and then the actual function itself. Um, several drugs have become the top sellers in the history of medicine. Again, treating the symptoms but not really getting at the underlying root of the problem. So if you know for people thinking, oh this is terrible, I've got to give up all the things that I crave and love, you know, I have to say it's not. You know, there's so much that you can eat and enjoy when you get back into real cooking and stop letting corporations and fast food restaurants cook for you. There's a, a wide variety of fresh produce, vegetables, meat, fish, uh, wonderful foods. I don't miss any of that stuff. And you know, as a teenager, like all of us, you know, I drank sodas, I ate at fast food places. I don't miss any of that stuff and, and uh, really to even smell it right now kind of it puts me off, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm also, I mean, I'm, I'll be 49 next month, and I actually have more energy now than I had even in my 20s. So, for example, the typical American breakfast is orange juice, toast, maybe a bowl of cereal, and some milk, uh, and maybe a little fruit. Now, we all think of that as the all American breakfast. What's wrong with that breakfast? Again, that breakfast is going to spike your sugar incredibly high. Your body's going to release insulin, and about two hours later, that sugar is going to drop, and you're going to be not having much energy at that point. And so what would be a better breakfast? My typical breakfast is a couple scrambled eggs, uh, maybe half of an avocado, quarter of an avocado, black beans. So I substitute black beans for the potatoes, 
that most people eat and that I, that I used to eat. The avocado is monounsaturated fat, which is great. So the protein and the fat, what, what happens is when lunchtime rolls around, I'm not even hungry. I may have some vegetable juice, some fresh, fresh squeezed vegetable juice, but I'm not really hungry until like maybe the mid-afternoon or five o'clock before my, before my workout. What happens is the protein and the fat satisfies my hunger and modulates my blood sugar release. And so I feel very energetic all morning through lunch. I will eat lunch. I'll force myself to eat lunch because it's really good to keep that, to keep your body fueled. People think about medicine as saving them. Right. And people need to start thinking about food right. as saving them. And that good health is the antidote to most diseases. Correct. The idea that if you are diabetic and you are taking your medications, you have to realize that it's never going to cure you. And this is an opportunity to completely cure yourself of diabetes. So you won't need not only the medications, not only will you feel a lot better, but you're also not going to have a heart attack or a stroke or sudden death. You know, the first doctor, Hippocrates, said, let food be thy medicine. And my mentor, Jack Lalane said that good health cures all illness. And so I encourage everyone to do everything that you can to boost your health, and you'll find that your medical conditions, your illnesses, will drop away as you become healthier. And the only way to do that is improve your diet and your lifestyle. So what I want you to realize is that your life, your health, and your well-being are all in your own hands. So don't believe the ads, the doctors, the drug companies. Your health is in your hands, and the best way to be healthy, eat right, rest, relax, think right, and get plenty of physical activity. So I want to thank our guest, Dr. Hilbron. Till next time, I'm Jim Healthy, on a mission to help you get well and keep getting better, and to create 1 million ex-diabetics this year, and you can help.